Welcome to Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Beauchamp, your host of our show called Crossing Bridges, where we talk about women in business and challenges that we've had to overcome to get from where we started to where we want to be. And then we continue the conversation by what's our next bridge to cross. I'm excited to introduce you today to our feisty, awesome woman with amazing ideas, Claudia Shambaugh. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you for being here today. It's my pleasure. Awesome. Here's what we're going to talk about today. I think topics that the viewers, you women for the most part, are curious about and have experienced. Things like stages in our life, motherhood, phases of motherhood, then crossing the bridge to, to pursue our passion and decide to go and to a career that we chose and how to make it propel. There's so many starts and stops and starts and stops with our career. So we're going to talk about that. And then we have some other hot topics to discuss as well. So Claudia, let's get started. Okay. I want to start by going back in time. You decided when you were in college that you wanted to major in political science. Correct. I'm always intrigued by that because I think, well, so did people want to be a history major or history teacher or a politician or an attorney. So when you chose political science, it's interesting how you've connected the dots and we'll talk about that. But what, what did you see for yourself? What were you aspiring for when you chose political science as your major? Well, I think having started at 15 in activism, I think that informed me about the importance of government, of policy setting, and rules and norms. And I think from that teenage formative experience that I was interested in learning about political science. You were 15? So, when I not when I majored, when no, I when was you in, first started. when I first started in, in politics, and I was reading a, about current events before then, but I I can remember the the movement that I was involved in. So that informed me about moving into political science, and okay. and despite I mean it, it was a very the place where I chose to do that it ha, it was all over the map with a very very conservative bias. And where were you? And my politics were not necessarily in that arena. Okay. So there we had to really think critically about what was the charter of that academic setting and what did we think was important. And where were you? I was at the Claremont Colleges. Okay. I was at a single sex college at Scripps and then my major was on the, at the Claremont then Men's College and Pomona College. Okay. Okay. So when you so you were an activist, so that made sense that you decided That's that the starting. political science was it. You it sounds like you were on a mission to make a difference. I, I think it was that. <laughs> and you still are. And I still am. And also you were a big reader, and so journalism is also part of who you are. Consumer of current events. And That's a, a slow reader, but I read and make sense of that. Okay. And keep adding to it. Okay. All right. And so that's how it started, is that you were an activist and you had a passion for people. Interestingly enough, too, you were brave enough, it sounds like you were courageous, because you had perspectives that were somewhat different than the majority of people who you were around, it sounds like. Well, I had my own little circle, but we, and we were all sort of dealing with the, the charter at hand okay. and our own politics, but not to over-focus uh, on that part, Okay, but just the setting there. Okay. So then you decided to, you got married and you had kids. Not as much later. Oh, like, much, much later. later. Oh, I, okay. I, I got an advanced degree in urban planning. Oh, so that's okay. still in mm -hmm. governance. Making and I, I got, uh, I worked in a state, several state agencies in Florida in the 80s. And that those institutional arrangements actually still inform about what's going on today. With, climate change, what we did with the coastal zone protection, coastal zone development, and resource management. So all of those things kept building on how I see what, where we are now with things as monumental as climate change. Very monumental. Yeah, I was thinking as I was listening to you, it sounds like you were ahead of your time. You know, it's a hot topic now, but you saw something that others might not have. I wish I was ahead of my time. I think that there were a lot of other people that saw it with real clarity and were very 
uh, focused on what needed to be done. I was just uh, accumulating more of an understanding so that I could try to be a force to be reckoned with at a later time. A force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I love that. Then you crossed the bridge. You had lots of work experience. You focused on making a difference with urban planning. And then you crossed the bridge because then you got married and had kids. Right. And I think that that's interesting. Our audience will be interested to know that too because this is about phases in life. You got your education, you started your career. I remember with me, same thing. Um, and then after working for a few years, I had two kids at that time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I need to be able to stay home with my kids and see what that's like, you know, spend some time with them, work on developing their character and such. One was eight and one was three, and I decided to leave that and then go and be a mom full time. And in true transparency, I needed to do other things in addition to that. So that's when I started my entrepreneurial phase in life. So let's talk about crossing the bridge. Um, you decided to take care of your family, so talk. Full time. Full time. Like, yes, I had to. I had contended with some child developmental issues, two very different children uh -huh. needing different attention, one of them a good deal more attention. I don't, I don't have the capacity to manage a career and manage family members. And at the same time I was rearing my children, my parents were a very complicated array of, of geriatric mm. uh, issues. And so uh, th that was, it seemed like a very full plate. I don't know how other women can lean into their career and lean into family. But I managed while I was raising the children to keep my oar in that water of activism. There, I could at least follow and tap in it from time to time mm -hmm. and, uh, and be a proud activist. That, that's, I think, something I realized in the moment then, that even though I looked like, to everybody else, a full-time homemaker, when I would bring out the, the profile of an activist, right. that uh, unabashedly, it always got respect. It surprised me. Why is that? Why did it surprise you? Well, because in the setting I've been, where I'm around a lot of professionals, a mm -hmm. lot of academics, and they're very hierarchical, mm -hmm. where does an activist fit into that hierarchical mm -hmm. setting? But I, if you're unabashed about that, it's authentic, right. then people will respond accordingly. That's because they saw you were authentic, that's why you got the respect that you did. And a little fearless, that helps too. A little fearless. A little fearless. I like how you said, keep your aura in the water too, so you, you weren't stopping. And no, you know, I was not stopping. You weren't no. stopping. And you know, I, I think that what you did too, Claudia, was you gave yourself permission to say, right now, so this is about the phases of life. Right now, I'm focused on my children. And well, I had to be. There, there was no way. I was learning very new things about well, child development, yeah. and, and to this day, there are issues related to all of that. But it was, it was something that needed my full attention. And you know what? Good for you for recognizing the value of having phases of life. Now, you said something interesting, too, and it's another phase that our generation, the baby boomers, are going through, and that is taking care of parents. So, I bet you have some words of wisdom to share with our audience about how, again, crossing the bridge, how you manage to stay sane, keep your sanity, um, keep your purpose in perspective of making a difference and being an activist, and taking care of your parents. And we always take care of our kids, no matter the ages. So, how, what, how did you? How did you? How did you? How did you manage that? I don't want to take credit for the role of taking care of my parents. I was not, I was long distance with them. Okay, so, even more challenging a lot well, of times. Well, but I tended to them when I could. And I guess, well, when we attend to our other generation, the older generation, we are modeling for our children. We are, we are modeling for our peers how to honor, respectfully attend to, our parents. And I, I quickly want to say uh, it's a vocabulary I've learned attending to my parents who are no longer living that if we're not careful, we either witness or we ourselves, we are in the act of geriatricizing our Ooh. parents. Yeah. And geriatricizing is the later end of infantilizing our younger. 
Tell us more about that. So where people assume that uh, the older person doesn't have a whole full mm. life and contributions mm. and feelings mm. and intellect. So geriatricizing is a way of dismissing an older person, that they're just mm. skin and circulatory system and oh. it's not. So I... That's deep there, Claudia, because we do have a tendency to do that without recognizing, I'm just thinking. There's a person and a soul in a, there. Who led us, by the way. Exactly. Yeah, and who, had, who still has a purpose. So that's, that's powerful. So geriatricizing. Right. Okay. It's offensive to see it happen. Or people, they raise their voices. Mm. Like if this person's hard of hearing, raising the voice is going to make that a better connection. It's always sort of confounded me. Uh, so. You know, you're really making me aware. I mean, I hope I don't treat people that way. But I will tell you, me and I bet the audience is going to really have a wake-up call and think about how they're treating someone who's older because those are the people who have the wisdom who have taught us our way. So Well, as we're getting older, yeah. Yeah. and we are starting to see where we are getting dismissed, exactly. right. and we're not going to let that happen. Let's talk about that for a Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Because you and I, I said baby boomers, and I hope you didn't mind that. I know I'm a baby boomer. I'm a total baby boomer. <laughs> so we're good with that. So how can we make sure that we don't get dismissed? We don't let someone slip. Tell us more about that. So if somebody's pulling ahead of us in line, okay. somebody's talking over, somebody didn't hear us, we don't let that moment okay. go by the wayside. We, we challenge the moment, and we can educate about what is all going on. I can even, physically, I'll even pass them on my bicycle, oh. a younger person. <laughs> so there are all, all See, kinds of feisty. ways See, you're feisty. That was a good definition. You're feisty. Definitely. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit now about what you do, because you are a producer of a radio show called Ask a Leader. Yes. So talk to us about that. Where can people find you? Um, where, where can we find you? So talk about your show, and then I know you are an evangelist for radio. So tell us what you, how you feel about that, and where can we find you, and what's your show about? Ask a Leader is at Radio KUCI, which can be heard on the FM dial at 88.9, okay. within the 200 watt range, or streamed live around the world on KUCI.org, or I have archived materials on my website, askaleader.com. Thank you for asking about that. Absolutely. It's a very generally formatted program, politics, culture, and everything in between, and it's always about what is very topical, what okay. is happening now. Current events. Current events. And it, it's uh, all generations of people that are, they are themselves forces to be reckoned with. It's a terrible title, and it works beautifully because. every single week. Because <laughs> of the, the guests that I interview, they really have summoned, they've mobilized in some way. Okay. And they've made a difference. And okay. they're making a difference. And so uh, we're... we're we're covering whatever is happening in the moment, and I, it's, it's the most... It's working. It's working like I've never had anything I've done in my life. That's work. awesome. So see, connect the dots. You were an activist at 15. Now you are a producer and host of a radio show, which is about making a difference and being a leader on hot topics, current events right now. So I think that you have definitely demonstrated how to take your passion and your purpose to make a difference. And so, you know what, we could talk for much longer, but our time's up. So what I want to do is I want to thank you so much for saying yes. I knew we'd have a lot to talk about. And I hope that you have certainly enjoyed our segment on crossing bridges. Real quick, what's your next bridge to cross? My next bridge to cross. I would like to be the communications person on a regular basis for an entrepreneur in the circular economy with a very excellent water treatment project that is going to the proposition that will help us reduce our carbon and our water footprints okay. so that we can be more hopeful about the climate okay. situation. Okay. okay, so that'll be another show. <laughs> we'll do that. That'll thank be you, another Michelle. show. So thank you so much for tuning in to Crossing Bridges. Again, we thank you for joining us on Women Lead TV, which is brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. We'll see you next time.